One of the first things that I learned how to make in a commercial bakery was pate choux or choux pastry. Now this versatile dough can be used to make some of the most iconic things like cream puffs and profiteroles and eclairs. And then you have croquembouche, you have crullers, you have Saint Honoré cake. Bridget, yeah. Bridget, Bridget, I gotta stop you. You haven't gotten to the best one. Which is what? I think I named them all. No, you didn't. Choux a croquelin. It is amazing. So it's a cream puff, which we all know and love. Love it. Right? So it's choux paste filled with a beautiful pastry cream that's lightened a little bit with whipped cream. And on top is the croquelin, which is a, basically a cookie dough that melts and drapes over and gets crisp in the oven. So you have crispy, soft pastry cream. It's, it's everything. So we're going to start with the pastry cream. It's going to take the longest to cool right. down. Right? So I'm starting with two cups of whole milk in this medium saucepan here. And I'm going to bring this to a simmer over medium heat. So while that's heating up, we're gonna mix the rest of our pastry cream ingredients right. together. So I have two thirds of a cup of all purpose flour in here. To that, we're gonna add sugar. I have half a cup of granulated sugar and a quarter teaspoon of table salt. And we'll just quickly whisk this together. So flour is our first thickener. The second is egg yolks. So we have six large egg yolks here. These obviously add beautiful eggy richness and they're also going to provide thickening when we when we get into the heat of it and then i have another half a cup of cold milk here great so we'll just whisk this together okay so this is nice and smooth i'm going to get our milk which is at a nice simmer right now and so we're going to start the process of tempering okay so this is really important we've got eggs in here we don't want them to curdle what we're going to do is basically whisk in about a half a cup of our hot milk we want to do this slowly here because we want to bring the temperature of this mixture up a little bit so we don't want to flood it with a lot of hot milk at this point you'd get curdling there so we're just going to whisk constantly get about a half a cup in there and this gently brings the temperature up okay great so that's there we're going to add it back to our milk here okay. and this is actually the opposite where you want to add it really quickly because this is the hot thing and adding this quickly will neutralize that and bring it down to a more even temperature okay so again whisking constantly and just flood it right in Okay, so now it is time to cook our pastry cream. So I'm gonna put this over medium heat and there's gonna be a lot of whisking and a lot of stirring because what you don't want to have happen is flour, egg to sit at the bottom, get too hot, curdle, right. and then you don't have a very even mixture. It takes about a minute. Okay. Okay, great. You can see that thickening up a little bit there. So now at this point, we don't wanna risk it anymore. We're gonna go down to medium low. So we're gonna whisk this constantly for about eight minutes. We really wanna thicken this up. Beautiful. That is a lovely mixture though. Lovely mixture, right? We're actually gonna go even thicker than this. Oh. So I'm gonna turn it back up to medium. Okay. I'm gonna whisk for about one to two minutes. And what we're really looking for is if I drop the pastry cream on the top, it really clumps on top. So it doesn't, doesn't blend easily back in. All right, let's check it. And that's great, nice and thick. So I'm gonna turn off the heat and slide it off the heat up here. Now it's time for our last two additions. So I have four tablespoons of cold butter and a tablespoon of vanilla extract. Mm. Whisk this together. So we're gonna get it into a nice, large, wide bowl. We want this to cool down kind of as quickly as we possibly can. And a wider bowl is gonna do that. Pastry cream loves to form a skin on top and we don't really want that in this application. No. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of parchment, lightly sprayed. That's gonna get pressed right on top of it. So we want this to chill down completely. It's gonna set and thicken up really nicely. And that takes at least two hours in the fridge up to 24 hours. Great. So pastry cream is out of the way. We're gonna work on the crackalan. We're gonna start with six tablespoons of softened unsalted butter. And to that, we're gonna add half a cup of light brown sugar. I'm just gonna use my spatula. And because we have softened butter, we'll just kind of smear it and combine it. Now we're gonna add three quarters of a cup of all purpose flour and a pinch of salt. And that's it. So again, just that smearing motion and we'll get these combined. Okay, beautiful, that looks great. That looks fantastic. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is transfer this to a piece of parchment paper. And I'll use my hands to form this into a rough six inch square shape at this point. Great, now we've got a second sheet of parchment paper and we're gonna roll this out to 13 by nine. Okay, great, so we are at 13 by nine. That looks great. Okay, so I'm gonna peel off the top piece of parchment now. Make sure that comes right off. Okay, so using a two inch biscuit cutter, we're gonna cut 24 circles. We're gonna leave them in here. We're not gonna try and take them out right now. Okay, great, we have 24. I'm gonna put the parchment paper back on top. 
And then this whole setup is gonna go into the freezer. It's gonna take about 30 minutes for them to firm up, but you can do this up to two days in advance. Okay, so it's finally time for the pas de choux, which is arguably the star of the entire situation. 100%. That's where we started this whole thing. So we're gonna do a little bit of prep work. First, we're gonna prep our pan. So um, I have a little bit of spray here, and I'm just gonna lightly coat it, and then lightly dust it with some all-purpose flour. All right, so our goal is a very thin layer of flour on here, but we start with more so that we can kind of shake it around. Right. We can get it into all of the crevices. So this is way too much flour still, so I'm gonna knock it out in this trash can over here, get just a fine amount on there. So this is gonna help, obviously, with sticking. We don't want these to stick to the pan, but it also offers a really easy way to mark our spots where we're gonna pipe the pate choux. So we're gonna do 24 circles, and I'm using the two inch biscuit cutter that we used before. It's really just gonna give us a landing zone, and that's pretty much how far the dough will expand out, so you can tell if they're gonna to be touching. Great. This is all prepped out, so we're gonna set this aside for a minute. Let's start on the actual pate choux. So in this saucepan here, we have six tablespoons of water. I have five tablespoons of butter that have been cut into half inch pieces. We have two tablespoons of whole milk, one and a half teaspoons of granulated sugar, quarter teaspoon of salt. We're gonna bring this to a boil over medium heat. Great, we're at a rolling boil. So I'm gonna shift this off the heat and I'm gonna add a half a cup of all purpose flour. And stir that until it's combined. Okay, so I'm gonna shift it back on to the burner and we're gonna go over low heat. We're gonna cook this for about three minutes. I'm gonna stir and kind of smear it around like this. We're looking for it to take on an appearance of kind of wet sand and be really shiny. And during that time, it's gonna hit about 175 to 180 degrees. We've got that nice appearance of wet sand. So I'm gonna shut off the heat here. All right, let's see where we are with the temperature. Okay, beautiful, we're at 177, so right in the sweet spot there. Perfect, we've hit our temp, and we're gonna take this immediately to our food processor. All right, I'm following you. So I'm gonna start off with just this mixture in here and run it for about 10 seconds in order to cool it down a bit before we add our eggs. All right. So while that's going, I'm gonna to whisk together our eggs. I have two whole eggs plus an egg white. Now that egg white is gonna add more water, which adds more lift to it, and we find that it got a nice crisp crust because of adding that to it. All right. Okay, that's great. So we have our two eggs plus one extra white in here. So now we're gonna go in with our eggs. So I'm just gonna open up the feed tube here. And while it's processing, stream in the eggs. We'll go for about 30 seconds here and then we'll scrape it down. Okay. Sometimes the egg and that kind of mixture can sit on the bottom if the blades don't get too low. Right. So we're just gonna make sure that's incorporated. Awesome, so we're gonna go for about 30 seconds more. It's gonna get really nice and sticky and tacky. Mm. Okay, beautiful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the blade out here and then I've got my pastry bag here and I'm using a half inch round tip. And that's pinched off there, so it's not right. gonna come through. And then I bring it in and scrape it in there. Nice. The thing that I learned about piping that it really made a lot more sense to me was that you're never really squeezing this. It's all about the twisting action at the top and that will easily just push everything through to make sure you get it all out. So we're just gonna twist at the top. It'll just fill in and pop that out. When we get down there and get good pressure, you can see when it starts to come through. Okay, so I'm gonna go here and we're gonna do about one and a half inch mounds and they're gonna expand as they bake. Right. So right in the center of our two inches. So we've got 24 nicely piped out. And don't worry about any kind of imperfections on top. The crackle is gonna go right on top there and smooth over any problems. So I'm gonna grab those from the freezer. Great. Okay, so Bridget, these are the crackle that we made earlier, froze. They've been in there about 30 minutes, so they're nice and firm. It's gonna make it really easy to transfer over. He's not lying. And for that, I'm gonna use a little offset spatula here. And we'll just go underneath, pick it up, and we'll give each one a little hat. Beautiful. So it's time to bake. We're gonna go to a 400 degree oven on the middle rack and bake for 15 minutes. Then without opening the door, we're gonna drop it to 350, so a little bit more moderate. We're gonna go at that point until they turn really gorgeous golden brown, which takes about seven to 10 minutes. At Cooks Illustrated, we're food nerds. That's why every recipe we develop involves research, cooking science, and rigorous testing by our team of expert test cooks before being tested by our dedicated community of 40,000 home cooks. Only the highest rated recipes earn a place in our award-winning magazine. Every issue features our latest recipes and discoveries, cooking tips, and equipment and ingredient reviews. Our step-by-step -step photos and hand-drawn illustrations show you exactly how to succeed. 
where you won't see even a single page of advertising. We've worked for home cooks like you for over 30 years. So are you ready to become the best cook you know? Subscribe to Cooks Illustrated Magazine at cooksillustrated.com today. I think these are gonna look really gorgeous. Oh! And look at those. Beautiful browning. So we'll get them out. Mm, mm, mm. The next step here is we wanna dry these out on the inside and let the top really crisp. So you pick them up and you wanna do a three quarter inch slit in the side of each one of them. And this slit will allow steam to escape. All right, and last one. So we've got slits in all of them. We're gonna go back into the oven, which has been turned off. And we're gonna prop the door open with a wooden spoon. So they're gonna be in a nice warm, dry environment, but they're not gonna bake anymore. Okay. That's gonna really encourage them to dry out. Perfect, thank you. So we're gonna let them sit for about 45 minutes. Okay, so these are beautifully baked and ready to be filled. And we're gonna do that with our pastry cream, but we're gonna lighten it up with some whipped cream. Okay. So I have a cup of cold, heavy cream here in a nice big bowl. I'm also whisking side to side. So you can see we have nice stiff peaks, which is wonderful. It's closer in texture to the pastry cream, so it'll combine really nicely. Now we're gonna come over to our pastry cream. You can see how much this has set up. We wanna combine these two and we're gonna whisk this first. So we're gonna fold this into our whipped cream. All right, so I am just gently folding this together. You can see it's getting a lot lighter in color. It's still plenty stiff because we cooked that pastry cream a long time and got it nice and thick. Okay, that looks great. Now the goal here is to fill these up with about two tablespoons of this lovely filling. So really pack it in. A quarter inch tip works great if you have that. A Bismarck tip, which is nice and long at the end here. This is fabulous for like jelly donuts and for filling things like this. It makes a smaller hole and allows you to reach to the back. And as you pull out, you can really fill it up. So this is what I'm gonna go with. So we've got our Bismarck tip in there and we're gonna fill this with about a third of the mixture. There Perfect. Go. Okay, so I'm gonna go in where I made that slit. And with the Bismarck, it's nice to go all the way to the back side, And then as you're filling and you feel it getting heavier, you pull it out. And that is a good indicator right there when you start to see it at the opening, but before it's spilling out. We'll put it on our platter right there. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going until all 24 are filled. This bag's gonna empty out and we're gonna keep filling it up as we go. Lovely. Okay, here we are. We have 24 perfect choux au croquelin. And what I wanna know is this gonna compete with all those other choux pastry desserts that you mentioned. This is straight out of a beautiful pastry case. This looks great. They look beautiful, right? Yeah. All right, but you gotta try them. Ooh. Look how heavy they are, so much pastry cream in there. Nice. Just again. All right. Mmm. No runny pastry cream at all. No, that is so good. Even though they're packed full of cream, they're nice and light. It's like a beautiful balance of sweet and a little bit of a savory dough. And I just love that crackle line. Like it obviously looks beautiful, but it's that sweetness and it's such a nice crunch. In the world of shoe pastry, this has climbed to the top. Oh, yes, that's what I was hoping for. You're gonna wanna make these beautiful little pastries. Cook a pastry cream until it's nice and thick. Freeze the discs of crackling dough. Use a food processor to make the pat of choux. And then fold whipped cream right into the pastry cream before filling. From America's Test Kitchen, you are absolutely gonna to wanna to make this choux au cracklin. I wonder if you could use this to make, I don't know, something like gnocchi. We hope you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed making it. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. And if you're ready to take your cooking to the next level, head over to americastestkitchen.com and get a free all access trial membership. While you're there, you can sign up for our free email newsletters and download our app. With unlimited access to over 14,000 of our test kitchen recipes and 8,000 product reviews, you'll have everything you need to cook and learn. So I ask, what are you waiting <laughs> for? Let's make something great together.